You are listening to Productivity Straight Talk with your host, Amber De La Garza. Amber is a sought-after productivity coach, trainer, speaker, and writer who gives entrepreneurs the straight talk on personal productivity. No BS fluff or overused jargon, just actionable strategies to get results and succeed in business. And here is your host, Amber De La Garza, the productivity specialist. Welcome, and thank you for listening to Productivity Straight Talk. Today is episode 168, Honoring Your Body, Mind, and Soul to Be Productive with Courtney Townley. If you're a business owner who wants to improve your time management and elevate your productivity so you can maximize profits, reduce stress, and make time for what matters most, then you're in the right place, and I'm so glad you've joined me. The topic that Courtney and I are jumping into today is something that I believe is so incredibly important. And in the interview, you're going to hear why I believe it's so important as well as Courtney. But I want you to hear that when we are looking to show up and do our best, to do big things in the world, make an impact, grow our businesses, raise our families, show up, health is of the utmost importance. And Courtney and I have been long-term friends and we share a little bit about how we became friends and what that relationship is towards the end of the interview. But I have Courtney on because not just is she my friend, but she is such a wealth of information and so powerfully puts into perspective, a new perspective on looking at health. And I think it's a conversation and a perspective that many, many of us know is true, but haven't quite heard it the way that Courtney's going to be sharing with us today. Now, I know that my listeners are both male and female, and I guarantee this episode is for both of you. We are all humans and people and have bodies, and our health is so important. But I will share with you soon in her bio that Courtney does specialize in working with women. So you'll hear us referencing women's health and things like that. However, if you're a guy, stay tuned because I am certain you may have some ahas around prioritizing your health and how that impacts your day-to-day life as well as your business. Okay, so without any further delay, I am so excited to introduce to you my friend and our guest, Courtney Townley. Courtney has been helping women around the world take better care of themselves with more consistency and ease for the past 20 years. She is the host of the highly rated podcast, Grace and Grit, where she helps women to expand the definition of health far beyond the topics of diet and exercise and help women write their own playbook for healthy living. She is a level two certified nutrition coach through the Precision Nutrition, which is a heavily rooted in behavior change science. She is a certified strength coach via the National Strength and Conditioning Association and a certified life coach via the Life Coach School. Courtney is passionate about multidimensional approach to wellness and deeply believes with the right dose of grace and grit, anything is possible. And now let's get to the straight talk and meet our guest. Welcome to Productivity Straight Talk. Courtney, how are you doing? I'm awesome. How are you? I'm so good. I'm so glad that you are here. You are a longtime dear friend of mine and fellow podcaster. And I am just really excited about what we're going to be chatting together about for our listeners. Before we dive into that, though, while they did get to hear your official bio and all your awesomeness, share with us a little bit about your entrepreneurial journey and maybe some things we didn't hear in the official bio. Yeah. So I think I have a pretty unique journey for what I do now in the world, which is really helping women to show up for themselves in a bigger way with more consistency and ease. And my entry into the wellness industry was many moons ago. And I came in as a trainer. And I had this mentality that if you just worked out enough, right? Mm -hmm. And if you just ate the right foods, all, all your problems will be solved. Absolutely. And I had a very, so I had a very narrow definition of health, which I have to say, I think our, our culture largely does. We're very focused on the physical aspect of health. But after many years of working with clients, I really started to see this reoccurring pattern that no matter how I educated them, 
they weren't going to show up to do the work with any degree of consistency and without me leading them if they didn't have the right mindset. Yeah. So I started to get really involved in health coaching, which was a lot more of me, as you well know, and your listeners well know, right? It's me working them through some strategy, but also helping them to work with their mindset to make sure that they follow through with the things that they put on their calendar. And more and more, I just started to see the effects of how much our mindset is influencing the way that we show up in the world. And of course, this crosses all arenas. It's not just a health conversation. But for me, it was very revolutionary in my ability to help women improve their health. And, you know, at the very beginning of my career, I was really intent on giving the meal plan and writing the cookie cutter Mm -hmm. exercise program and really giving people the action items to help them create success. But ultimately what I became so passionate about is that, hey, if people are not driving their own car, I'm not really helping them. So how do I help them step into more of a self-leadership role in the health arena? Right. And of course it counters everything the diet and fitness industry teaches us and preaches us and sells us, but it's been so rewarding to see the shift and ultimately know that I'm really empowering women to stop looking outside of themselves for a list of rules and regulations on how to live their life. Yes. You know, you and I have had a lot of conversations over the years and I was always so blown away at the the parallels to the mindset work and how we show up for ourselves in our businesses. And then you'll talk and I'm like, oh my gosh, that is like what I believe. Like that is ingrained in what I know works after years and years and years of coaching and experience. And you're talking about health and how you can make, you know, show up for yourself and the consistency. And I'm like, yeah, because it's truth principles, it's like, that's how you show up for yourself in business. You're not negotiating with yourself. You're setting yourself up for success. And I was always so fascinated because your excitement and your perspective on taking that to the health world. And then me realizing how much more mindset, I guess, had to do with it. Like you, when I first started into productivity and time management eight years ago, it was like, do this here's the strategy, like, cause that's what all the books are. And then over time, I'm like, they don't need just another strategy. Like, where's the glue? Where's the, I'm going to show up when it's hard. And then you and I just had all these great organic conversations and I've just enjoyed that. And I think a lot of today, you sharing this with our listeners is going to be like, is that am- like, is, is that Amber speaking from a different perspective? <laughs> right. And I want them to feel that way because sure. you and I jam so well together and speak a lot of the same language. And that language is really what gets results in truth. So the reason I brought you on is because like you, I have taken a more holistic approach to my arena and my arena being productivity. The first and foremost is ourselves. How do we leverage ourselves? You're a business owner too. We've had these conversations. You can have a rocking business. You could have the marketing nailed down. You um, could have the best team. But if you as the business owner are failing in health and energy and focus. You got nothing. Literally nothing, right? Yeah. Yeah. And yet it's the first place that business owners are like, I'm actually not going to prioritize that area of my life. Like, I'm just going to run on empty and see how that works for me. Yeah. So I, I think that business owners really, when it comes to business and health, it's an either or. Yes. Equation. And obviously that doesn't work for longevity. It doesn't work for longevity for your business. And it definitely doesn't work for longevity for your health. And I think part of the reason that happens is because we have these thoughts like, I can't take care of my health and have a successful business, but re- not realizing that that thought is totally optional and oh so powerful. Because right. if you believe that, of course, you're not going to show up to take care of your health. Right. But if you flip that into something like, I actually must take care of my health to really be a powerful leader in my business you're probably going to, you know, carve out a little more time for yourself in your schedule. Yeah. So they are very synergistic. Your, your business feeds your health, especially yeah. if you do work you love. And of course, being in a great healthy state is going to help support the business. 100%. So this is definitely your arena. And I'll say that the way that this shows up, just say like behind the curtains of coaching, is if I get a new client and in the onboarding session, they're telling me like, 
they're not getting enough sleep, they're not moving their body very minimally. That is like number one priority. And they look at me like I have a third eye. They're thinking I'm coming in to talk about how they can close more sales or, you know, bring somebody else on their team. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like we need to get, if you can't even think of investing 30 minutes in yourself each day, we've got bigger problems, right? Like that, that is the very minimal that we need to say, this needs to be worked on and prioritized. And then we stack all these other things. And I'm not even the health person. I'm just I'm just encouraging them to create the time and space, priority one them. But you're also being realistic. And I think that even though people don't like hearing it, right? right, Because it's not what they came to you for. Totally. It's good coaching because we're actually laying the foundation for sustainability, you know? And so it's, I always say, like, I have the most unsexy sales pitch in the (laughs) health industry that there is because I teach consistency and discipline and the long and steady approach. And, you know... That's that's not a, a high selling ticket. I mean, people don't. They would rather buy the six pack ab programs, you know, right. the, the get thin quick schemes, all of those things. Until so, they've bet on other people for these schemes, and then they realize at the end of the day, they need to show up and do the work. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So let's just start off with, we. well, we already started there, but we were talking about this whole connection. Like I prioritize it in my coaching to give the space and priority to it. But what is that connection? Why do you think that it's foundational and that, you know, taking care of yourself and your health fuels productivity and business and us as business owners and entrepreneurs? What does that look like for you? Well, first I'll say this, that the large majority of my clientele is very high achieving women. Mm-hmm. Right. So they run their own businesses, they're attorneys, they're physicians, they they're they're running households, they're very multifaceted, full lives. Yeah. And you know, the things that I always tell these women is that the more you make time for yourself, it is going to seep over and benefit all those other areas of your life. So when we're talking specifically about business, number one, like really just obvious, we're gonna have less sick days. Yeah. Right. We're going to show up and be able to, you know, get more work done, be more productive and really fortify the business because we're there and we're not just there, but we're fully there. Right. We're yeah. fully present. We're not just there in a reactive state an exhausted state or feeling, you know, feeling sick state. The other thing is that definitely taking time to get enough sleep, making sure you're eating, you know, nutrient dense food, moving your body, hydrating and managing your mind. All of those things are going to help you to improve your cognitive function. Mm -hmm. So when you sit down to get a project done or you're having a difficult conversation with a client, you are operating from your most balanced chemical state right? Okay. Which allows you to respond in a way that you feel good about later and not just react. Okay. So I talk a, a lot with my clients about chemical balancing, that it's so important because when chemistry is disrupted, we can get very reactive because of it, because we don't feel good. Okay. So in layman's terms, yes. and you can tell me if I'm totally sure. wrong, I'm hearing you say like, when I am hangry, like it's yeah. like, no, you're not the, the best mom and wife right now. You're like cranky and like whatever. And you, so that's like a, a moment of time where you know you're out of balance. You jokingly call it hangry, but you can't function. You're not functioning your best. But that's actually being normalized throughout our entire day, whether you call it hangry or not. It's like, oh, I'm just mood swings or, oh, I just, I feel irritable every time my assistant talks to me. Yeah. That might not be that, that their problem. <laughs> Well, it, yeah. And, and the thing, I love that you bring up hunger because the thing that I tell people all the time is hunger shows up in so many ways. We kind of have this illusion that it's it's just, a, you know, a kind of a rumbling in our tummy or it's the hangriness. And right. it definitely shows up as those things for some people. But for me, hunger shows up as lack of focus. Mm-hmm. So a project that should take me 20 minutes ends up taking me two hours. Yes. Simply because I haven't taken the time to walk into my kitchen and put some food in my mouth. Right. Yes. Yeah. So, so this, I mean, it's, it's a great example. Hunger it, for sure. it, right. Okay. So another one I know that you prioritize a lot is just water. Like, I mean, I know, you know, these things and this may be newer or it's a reminder for our listeners, but like literally when you're dehydrated, it's like, you're the last one to know. But your body is like not letting you focus or you're getting headaches or you're dragging or you're not as sharp to 
You can't be decisive. These are all fundamental things that we need to be good business owners for. And it could just be you're not prioritizing drinking your water. A hundred percent. And so we hear this word metabolism thrown out a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a slow metabolism. My metabolism hates me. And I always say to people, okay, stop right there. Do you even know what the metabolism is? Right. And a lot okay, of people are going like, to say no. no. So go <laughs> give us, give us like the one-on-one. So we're on yeah. the same page. Courtney. So metabolism is the ability your cells have to, to do their jobs well. And your cells have a lot of jobs. They build tissue, they detoxify, they restore, they transport nutrients. They do all kinds of things in the human body. You are literally a mass of trillions of cells. At the most fundamental level, that's what you are. And guess what the medium is for all of those operations to take place? I'm going to guess you're going to say water. It's water. <laughs> okay. Right? I mean, we've yeah. all heard, yeah. oh, you're It's what water. moves. It creates movement, right? Is that what yeah. that's what And you can live longer without food than you can without water. This is why. So when we say that someone has a slow metabolic function, in essence, what we're saying is their, their cells are not getting what they need to operate efficiently. Mm-hmm. So cellular function is either distorted, or very slow, it's come, you know, come, come down to a crawl. And then we get ticked off at our body that it's not doing what we want it to do, but we're not giving it what it needs to do its job well. Right, right. Yeah. This is, okay, this is what I love. You're always so excited and you always educate me so well. And it's so funny that you opened up. You're like, I started out with just educating and strategies. And I just want whomever's listening to here to be like, you are just a plethora of knowledge, like deep, deep knowledge. And clearly, I don't know, connecting the dots with the mindset and like the whole person. So it's this full on strategy, not just strategy. It's this holistic approach to health because I love that you didn't just go from one extreme to the other where you're just like, do it. It's mindset. Lead yourself. <laughs> yeah. right. and, and then you're like, and, but I don't know that I don't know, like you don't know what you don't know about health. Right. And so you're so knowledgeable also to fill them with that knowledge. That's awesome. And the, you know, the way that I like to sort of speak to it is that, you know, the chemistry piece, which is the piece I feel like we're so hung up on. It's what we're sold. Do this diet, do this exercise program, take this supplement and it will change your chemistry. Well, it might. And chemical balancing is really important for the reasons I've already mentioned. But what we need to not make the mistake of doing is thinking that that's the real work of health. So what is the real work? Yeah. So health is multidimensional, right? It's, so we, again, I've said this before in the, in the interview, but we tend to focus on the physical aspect of health in our culture. But there's a mental, emotional aspect, our mental health, our emotional health, right? And then there are things like our environmental health, how we respond to the environment around us, environmental toxins, things of that nature, There is our sense of purpose, right? So you could call that like a spiritual dimension or something of that that nature, right? But the sense of purpose. There's community and connection with others, right? That that is so important. And we know this, like so important to our hormonal health and the longevity of our life. So I I mean, to pause there, I think that in this time that we're recording, it's more, more relevant than ever that people are realizing how important connection with other people are or when you're missing it. But that impact is having on ourselves and our kids and things like that. We were talking about that before we hit record. Yeah. Yeah. So when I get a woman who comes in is like, give me the meal plan and the exercise program. It's like, well, first of all, why do you want to pursue those things? Because your reason for doing anything is everything. If you want to go on, go on a diet and exercise just to look a certain way to get someone else's approval, we need to address that, right? right. <laughs> yeah, to, for sure. We need to change those reasons. We need to make them deeper. But the other thing is, even if I can help a woman to eat a lot better, you know, improve her nutritional density, get her to exercise regularly, but she hates her job. She's in a horrible relationship. She has no sense of self-worth. Do you see how the, the, the health picture is, it's not complete. Right, right. But when you start pulling back the layers, I would almost think that it becomes easier to laser focus on the area that makes the biggest impact when you do work. That's why we start with chemistry, 100%. That's why we start there. We don't end there. Yes. It's an entry point. There you go. 
And when you start cleaning up these other areas that you spoke about, when you feel it, when you realize it's multidimensional and all these things come up for you, I would assume that that's what keeps the long-term results once you've done that cleanup in all those other areas. Is that, is that what you've seen? Yeah. So this is where I always say that, you know, health, and we kind of started saying this, but health is an exercise in Mm self-leadership. And self-leadership is you deciding which of those buckets you want to give attention to or how much attention you want to give to each of those areas. So I might decide for my state of health right now, I need to pull back a little bit off of exercise. Not that I'm not going to stop, right? But I'm going to adjust the dosage So I can give more time and energy to my family that needs me for whatever reason, right? Right. It's just more of a need. Yeah. Um, Where someone else might decide that they're going to actually... I'm going to cough in and say, kids being homeschooled. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly, right? (laughs) That's the reality. We were, that's it. Like that is a need that's new for many people and there's a lot of adjustment. But I love that you approached it as adjustment when there's many people utilizing something like that as the reason they just stopped working out. Yeah. So uh, I use the phrase structured flexibility. So the structure Mm -hmm. is that I have all these dimensions to health. Okay. But flexibility is that if I want to maintain my health on an ongoing basis, I have to be willing to be flexible within how much I'm dedicating to each of those areas. Because sometimes... I need to give more to a certain area, which is going to require that I take away from something else. And, and, and that's just the way of it. It totally but is. When we get really rigid about what it's supposed to look like, we start telling ourselves things like, I'm failing. I'm, you know, I got to start over. I'm never going to be successful. And it then you start work. playing the all or nothing game. Totally. Yeah. I, not to cut you off, but literally insert someone's schedule or routines. So it, instead of instead of saying, okay, I have white space so that there's flexibility built in, it's like it didn't work. It, it, it just, it, I'm not going to try it again. Like, I don't know. Schedules just don't work. It, it just seemed like it was easier to just figure it out each day when you know that that's not getting you the results you want. Whereas you're saying, you know, structure with flexibility is setting yourself up for success. Like, That is reality. The reality is you live a real life. I always say we run real businesses, living real lives. So let's make our strategies like that. They have to be flexible. And nobody lives your life. (laughs) Right. So to expect someone else to tell you exactly what you need to do to honor those areas of your life is absolutely insane. You're never going to feel fulfilled or complete by following someone else's agenda for your life. Right. Right. So we need to be willing to experiment, try some things on, you know, be willing to, you know, lean in and dance with that flexibility to figure out what's working and what isn't. But there is no hard and fast rule for how this is all supposed to play out. That's life. Right. But that's also why people have created the stories and the beliefs that there's something wrong with them because that thing worked for them. It didn't work for me. So I'm silently going to just blame it on me. Like it, you know, behind the scenes. Um, why, why does it seem like everybody else is getting results? The commercial said everyone got results. So surely it's, it's me. And then you turn that and ignore that. And then that's why you don't feel motivated or inspired to do the next thing that could actually really work for you. And the only reason I know this in your world is because it's the same thing in my world. Mm -hmm. So there is hard and fast principles and strategies about your time management and your scheduling, i.e. to be successful, you have to be a morning person. Well, no, you need to have a good structured routine that sets you up for success. I don't care if that starts at 10 a.m. for you, but that's the thing is they've been said, no, no, no. The belief is anyone successful wakes up at 5 a.m. And once you hold that belief, which is someone else's story, you're setting yourself up for failure, right? Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Ugh. Literally, those of you that are listening in right now, this is our conversations all the time. We're like, and there's this thing. Oh my gosh, it's so similar over here in health. And so at its core principle, one of the things I really wanted to make sure you touched on today was all about the um, ways that self-leadership shows up. Yeah. And what, what does that look like? I know you have a bit of a framework, which I fell in love with. And so I wanted to make sure we got that covered today. So when you talk about self-leadership and having the responsibility to approach your health as obviously your responsibility, but an experiment, 
what does that take? Yeah. So first let's define what self-leadership is. So, cause there's a lot of different definitions, right? Everyone might define it a little bit differently, but the way that I like to define self-leadership is this. It's having a developed sense of who you are, what you do and where you want to go coupled with your ability to influence your thoughts, your emotions and your behavior to get there. Oh my goodness. Okay. Recap that one more time. I feel like everyone's going to take some notes. So say it one more time. So self-leadership is having a developed sense of who you are, Mm -hmm. what you can do, and where you want to go, coupled with your ability or your capacity, you could think about it either way, to influence your thoughts, your emotions, and your behavior to get you there. Okay, let's unpack that one. That's great. So what's cool about it is you could, I mean, self-leadership in, in productivity, right? Or self-leadership in the health arena. It, that's such a powerful definition in any one of those spaces. Mm-hmm. But I take that a step further and I break it down to really into kind of six different areas of focus. Those six areas are self-respect. And I will just tell you quickly that what I mean by self-respect is you will never have the capacity to show up for yourself on a consistent, ongoing basis if you don't think that you are worth your own time. Mm. So that is the starting place. So pause. Like, can you get to a place that you have worked through your thoughts, your chatter, your emotions to guilt-free prioritize getting a good night's sleep, going for a walk? Now, my clients that come to me are literally like, no, my business needs that 15 minutes. And they mean business. And I get it. I'm hearing you. I understand. But it's because they have valued this time in their business because this this business needs something from them more than they're valuing themselves to prioritize that time over all else that could show up on your to-do list. Yeah. So what I hear in that, when someone comes to you and says that, like my business absolutely needs my time, we say it as if it's a fact, right? And what we, what we don't acknowledge is it's optional thinking. So when I start recognizing that it is a choice for me to think that way and is thinking that way, that my business is always the most important thing, allowing me to show up in the other areas of my life in the way that I want to. Right, right. So um, just to give the behind the scenes, it is an optional thought and then they get coached. And then I look at them and say, your business does not need that 30 minutes from you. Like, I don't know who you think you are. (laughs) Like, like some real direct talk. Can we break this down? Tell me where this belief came from. Tell me that that 30 minutes is going to get everything checked off your list. Cause that's where, where we're at. Right. And they're like, of course not. I was like, okay, so do you think we can check off like taking care of yourself? Like going for, like I literally started the basics and that it's always yes, but they had believed this other story for so long that until someone comes in and kind of shakes their, their belief, that's what they've normalized. And normalizing anything is so dangerous because now we don't even see it as if there's another possibility of thought. So all a belief is, is a recycled thought. You have thought the thought so many times. I love it, that. It's, it, it's a belief. Yes. So how do we create new beliefs? We start thinking new thoughts. Okay. And I just want to offer you something like with, with when, when and this is, you know, to offer your listeners that when you start recognizing that there are some thoughts like my business really needs me or I must, my business is always the top priority. When we recognize thoughts like that are not allowing us to show up the way we want to show up, there's two entry points to new thoughts that I love. The first one is it is possible that. Because you can't go from my business is the most important thing to my health is the most important thing and expect yourself to believe that. Right. Not going to happen. No. Or... you're now creating that all or nothing and not an end mentality. And yeah, that end and mentality, yeah, exactly. right? So you're setting yourself up to, for many people, that's why they do go from one extreme to another and kind of do this yo-yo. Yeah. So we use the, in, the, the intro of it is possible that I could carve out 20 minutes for myself today and show up for my business in a bigger way than I ever have because I feel so good. 
It's possible. I'm not saying it's true. I'm just saying it's possible. So but are you willing to test it? That's are you willing to ask. test that thought? Yep. Because I bet if you practice that thought, you are going to have better results than if you practice. My business is always the most important thing. Right. Right. And another, what we call a bridge thought is I'm becoming a woman who fill in the blank. I'm becoming a woman who also makes time for herself Mm. or I'm becoming a person who prioritizes her health and her business. Right. But both of those are just very graceful. You're not lying to yourself and they're just filled with possibility and possibility feels exciting and it feels very invitational And it's more likely that we will show up for ourselves in the way that we want to when we're thinking about it in that way. Right. I love those two bridge thoughts. Okay, that's awesome. Thank you. You just taught me something too. So that's great. Definitely. All right. Okay, so we start with self-respect, which is just that we have to build that self-worth so we make time in our calendar for ourselves. And then we move into a space of self-awareness. And self-awareness is hard (laughs) because it's like going into a really messy house and turning the lights on. And you're like, oh, (laughs) let's, I'd rather just not, I'd just rather turn the lights back off. Right. Right. Or like I say to clients all the time, it's like, we just want to brush the dirt under the rug rather than clean it up. Right. So self-awareness is basically creating time to be introspective about what you're doing and what you're not doing? And do you like your reasons for doing those things? And often the answer is going to be no. I'm doing a lot of things that I don't like my reasons for. I'm drinking after work to manage my stress. Don't like my reasons. I'm going to bed late because I feel like I have to stay up to make time to be with my husband. And even though that reason might sound nice, it's costing me a lot the next day. So when we really start looking at why we're doing what we're doing and really getting a deep level of honesty with ourselves, we start to see what needs to be cleaned up. Mm -hmm. So this is probably the most overlooked area, right? Like nobody wants to spend time in self-awareness because self-awareness doesn't feel good. No, I'm sure it feels, like you said, very messy. So I'm listening to this and I just want to understand, are these phases you go through or can you be in multiple areas at the same time? Of course. Okay. Yeah. I would say these are, these are all, you know, equally important elements of just the self-leadership model. Okay. Right? Okay. So they are all happening sort of synergistically, simultaneously. And sometimes like health, you have to put more focus on one than the other. It really depends where you're starting in your journey. Right. So that makes sense. Because as you're explaining this, I'm thinking you can do a lot of cleanup and then you can see things from a different perspective. Like the lights got super bright and you're like, oh, there's still more. So it's kind of an ongoing journey and an ongoing um, exploration, I guess, of self And health is. Health is an ongoing journey of self-discovery. It is not a finish line to cross. It is not a, a destination to arrive at. It is just, it's something you will be engaged with, hopefully, for the rest of your life, like your marriage, right? Mm -hmm. It's a relationship with self. Got it. Yeah. Okay, so with self-awareness, all of a sudden, you know, now that we're being really honest with ourselves, we can see where we might need to develop ourselves a little bit. Like, why am I not comfortable setting boundaries at work? Mm -hmm. Why am I eating at eight o'clock at night, even though I just had dinner at seven? Right. 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 And this, this is where a lot of skill set development starts to happen. And this is largely, of course, what I teach, right, is how to, how to organize yourself and structure your life in a way that you're, you're managing thoughts and emotions in a way that's helpful and not actually harmful to your health. Yeah. And then we move into self-management. Like you can't, self-management is time management. It's emotional management. It's thought management, right? Yeah. All of the things. Because once you see what you need to do, you're not just going to miraculously show up to do them. You're going to have a fierce resistance. Yes. And you said time. So like creating a plan, making it a routine. It's just part, you're building up that habit. So really structuring yourself for success on the things that you've now realized you need self-development areas on. Like making a plan. Is that right? Making a plan and, and definitely smart strategy, right? So we're not overhauling our life overnight, but we're being very graceful and kind to ourselves with our approach because that's how change actually works in the brain. You know, it's something that we need to sustain over long periods of time, 
So it can't just be an overhaul of our life within just a few days. And every listener that has listened to any number of episodes will know that that is my same belief about time management is you get excited or you find a new strategy and you just go off the rails like it's January 1st and you're like, why didn't that work? And now you're back to the yo-yo because you tried to drastically overhaul instead of making an incremental plan of improvement that sticks and becomes your new norm. This is where you and I are very similar. Again, I remember I was like, that is the only way improvement with time management can happen. You can't go from a reactive free-for-all seven days a week to a structured block schedule and think that's going to work for you. Right. Not going to happen. I mean, well, not for any length of time, right? It might happen right. for a few weeks, but, and this is, this is what the diet industry sells, of course. But if you actually look at how behavior change works in the brain, neuroplasticity, which is the ability of your brain to rewire, right? To sort of react to things in new ways. Yep. You don't build new pathways in your brain in just a few days. You build them with lots and lots of practice. Yes. So the neural pathways that you currently have have been decades in the making. And for you to expect yourself to just change those neural pathways in 21 days or a couple days, it's right. just not how it works. Right. So then I would assume that's where the willpower, once the willpower expires, whatever that duration, you haven't really made lasting change, you're back to the old ways like instantly. Of course, you always yeah. are going to revert. Your brain does not like a lot of effort. I know, I mean, we're all smart listening to this podcast and, you know, we, we are, we're very capable people, but it's not a testament to your, um, your intelligence to say that the brain does not like effort. So if you think about the amygdala, which is like your lizard brain, it has three primary objectives, seek pleasure, avoid pain, exert the least amount of effort. Right. So when you overwhelm your brain with lots and lots of, lots of effort for a new behavior, and let's just say that your new behavior is, I'm not going to eat any carbohydrates anymore. Something really dramatic, right? Really big. I'm going to remove an entire food group. And then you live your day and by five o'clock at night, you're tired, you're stressed, and you have low blood sugar, which mm-hmm. is a very dangerous trifecta in terms of trying to respond and not react to life. You're going to be very reactive. And in that moment, especially your brain's like, ooh, I don't have a lot of bandwidth here to make a lot of effort. And I don't want to make a lot of effort anyway. So let's just go back to the easy stuff, which is how I've been behaving for the last 20 or 30 years. Right, right. And then you start negotiating with yourself and you say, I'll start again tomorrow. I'll start again tomorrow. And, and, or worse yet, we we wake up the next morning telling ourselves I'm such a failure. yeah. Because there's something wrong with me that that happened to me. Right. No, but there's something seriously wrong with your strategy, right? Like you mm-hmm. didn't set yourself up for success with how you planned your day. And you probably didn't parent your brain, right? So you let that amygdala take over at right. the most vulnerable time of the day, which really, you know, we want to be using other parts of our brain to help avoid that. Right. So in translation, something that I always say is when I'm looking at strategy with a client or in business, I would say, what's path of least resistance? Like just offering that question, I say, okay, so because oftentimes we have options. That's what we have and we get stuck in is options in business. And I'll say, what's path of least resistance? Like what's the easiest path? Because our brains literally want to go there anyways. So is that a viable option? And if it is, we're going with simple because when we try to overhaul everything, like you just said, you're setting yourself up for the cycle of failure, talk to, saying I can't do it when you just thought you needed to make it harder because we think we're smarter and it needs to be more complicated. And oftentimes strategy that works is the simplest path of least resistance strategies. You say it so much more eloquently than <laughs> I do. The path of least resistance. I say, keep it stupid, simple. Like okay, just, there you go. <laughs> simple. Like keep it stupid simple. And you're absolutely right. You keeping it stupid simple is not a testament to your intelligence yep. or your lack thereof. It's actually like validation that you're serious about succeeding. Right. Because if you understand how change works in the brain and you really are in it for the long haul, not just for a couple of weeks, it's a really wonderful gift to give yourself and yep. so sensible to start small. And yeah. make winning easy. And as you win, guess what? You're going to be more motivated to show up. 
Right. 100%. I mean, you and I talk business a lot. We're business pals. And it's like, you know what? There's enough hard stuff in business. Let the hard stuff be hard. When, it, when you can make something easy or simple, like jump on it. That is like actually the smartest thing you can do either personally or professionally is try and eat up all that simple stuff because there's enough of the stuff that is just not simple. So let that be that. And the reason I'm saying that, Courtney, is because I just got off of a coaching call and a, my client decided to make a um, hire and the person, the perfect person fell in her lap. So you know what she's going, where she's going next. She's like, I think I need to interview and do a full po- posting and like make it really complicated. I'm like, no, it's simple. Let it be simple. She's literally your perfect person that we imagined for this role. It can be simple. Isn't that fascinating how we do, it's like we don't allow simple. We right. have to overcomplicate and really like bleed for it. And it's yes. like, no, you really don't. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. And the reason I'm digging deeper on this though with you, Courtney, is because I want, I want you, whom we are in your ear right now to hear, that if you're looking for change in health or time or productivity, that that sometimes it's it can be simple. And it doesn't mean that it's, I mean, you can make some huge impact and and huge headway with simple. And I guess that's where I'm looking to reprogram that belief that it needed to be difficult to get results in any of these arenas. Yeah. And I think that, you know, in, in my line of work, women have failed so many times, you know, mm-hmm. and had to, you know, reach for yet another program and another diet and start over and over and over that they just keep reinforcing that thought pattern that it's impossible. It's impossibly hard. Right. Right. And then they seek evidence to prove themselves right. So right. yes, if we can just practice that new thought, this can be easy. I got this. I can do, you know, I can do this in, in, with simple steps. Totally. All right. Awesome. Okay. Which totally leads into your next self. Yeah. So the last two pieces that I lean very heavily into with my, with my clients is self-discipline and self-compassion. And, you know, self-discipline can be a very dirty word for some people like, ooh, because they think of self-discipline as their parents disciplining them or someone else telling them what to do. Yeah. But the way that I like to talk about self-discipline is discipline is an extension of self-respect and self-worth and self-love. Mm-hmm. Right? So we show up to do hard things for, to, to, for our personal growth because we love ourselves, yes. because we're worth expanding for. Yes. Yes. And so, yeah, that's how I talk about discipline. Okay. So tell me what is some of the language that um, would be the negative side of that self-discipline that people currently might have language around and you're yeah. re- wiring that. So, oh yeah, a great one. I'll give you a great one. It's just that when a discipline is a lack of freedom mm. and I, I flip that and I say, actually discipline allows for freedom because what, what I hear people arguing for, right, is their limitations, of course, right? That, well, if I, if I constrain myself a little bit and say no to this, that's lack of freedom, right? In the moment. But that's such a short-sighted vision of freedom. If you said no to this thing in the moment, like no to more work or no to eating like your fourth piece of pizza or no to that third glass of wine, it's going to allow for more freedom tomorrow because you're going to feel so good. You're going to feel so much better. Yes. So it's like, which freedom are you focusing on? The short-term freedom or the long game freedom? Oh my gosh. I'm focused on the long game. Totally. But people, I mean, rightfully so, many people are setting themselves up. They want instant gratification, right? Like, Yeah, we live. Look look where we live and what is the age that we live. Totally. But if you can, but then now we've come full circle to where you tied it into why did you want to do this work? Like when you need to show up and have self-discipline and that you're in this for the long term, it has to be something really deep. Why does it matter to you to, you know, dive into this arena, to use your words and really do the work that it, that takes your life and ultimately your business, how you show up in your business to new levels. Definitely to new levels. And I think that, you know, we can't it's like our best thinking got us to where we are, right? It really did. Like we got here to where we are with the current results we have with our current thought process and to create new possibility for our life. We have to be willing to think in new ways, right? 
And this is like, this is a big piece of, um, of course, what I focus on with my clients, because a lot of them are basing their future success on past belief systems. Mm -hmm. Hold up. That past belief system only got you here. It's not going to get you there. Right. So discipline, of course, is a piece of that, how we look at discipline, how we apply discipline, all of those things. And then of course, the counter to self-discipline is self-compassion because you're going to screw up. You're not going to be perfect. Progress is not linear, right? You're going to be in the middle, the river of misery, like, (laughs) like, so defining this, but those moments are coming for you if you are committed to growth. Yes. And if you are a jerk to yourself in those moments, it will have everything to do with, you know, your capacity to rise or not. Yes. So it, it's almost having, so, you know, you started this off too, is like that relationship with yourself, right? And we're both moms, we're moms of 10 year olds, right? And so I think like when, when he makes a mistake, you know, how quick am I able to get back on track and not like be upset or mad and like ruin the whole rest of the Saturday because he got in trouble. It's like, no, you handle the situation and you get back on track. Yeah. Like, like that's what we do for the ones we love the most dearly. But then we'll beat ourselves up for a week because we fell off of the eating plan or we didn't go exercise or whatever that, that emotional beat up is because we're not having that same compassion we wouldn't do that to those that we love closest. You want to. Well, and the reason we don't do it to them is because we don't make it mean they're bad people, right? So when my kid yells at me, I don't make it mean that he hates me or he's a horrible child. Right. I just sort of have that little pep talk with myself that, oh, he maybe he's hungry, he's had a big day, you know, and, and me reacting is certainly not gonna help the situation. Right. And so just kind of going through that, you know, quickly, but when I mess up, how easy it is to actually define myself by my failure. Mm -hmm. That's dangerous. Yeah. Because when I define myself, it means that I can't change, that I don't like exercise. I will never be successful. I'm always going to be overweight. Right. Right. Those definitions are um, dangerous. Dangerous. Okay. I don't know. I was, I was putting words in your mouth, but that's the first thing that came to mind. It's just a dangerous path to go down. It is. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Oh my gosh. Okay. So thank you so much, Courtney. This has been, this has been such a great conversation and I'm sure you haven't always tied productivity specifically or in business with, you know, health. And we were able to go back and forth because I, I know what my listeners are hearing. And so it's been you know, for some of them week after week of hearing similar messaging. And I wanted to tie it to that the work that they've been doing or are currently doing in time management and productivity is the work that they can take those skill sets and apply them in their health area too. They're already doing it. Yes, they are. They're already doing what they need to improve their health in their businesses. And I'm a business owner. And I will tell you that when I am aligned and what alignment means to me is that I'm showing up in a way that honors what my body, soul, and mind need, right? Yep. And when I'm showing up in those ways, I am 10 times the business owner. Yeah. Than in the times that I'm misaligned. Yeah. And the the objective of life is not to never get misaligned. You are going to get misaligned all the time. But the secret is how quickly do you realign yourself? Yeah. Do you have a framework and a strategy for quickly pivoting yourself back into alignment? Because that's what successful people do. That's what healthy people do. Right. It's not that they don't ever get off track. Right. And, and then again, just to tie it, so that's that self-awareness. If you're always in self-awareness, then it's not like an on or off. You're like, oh, I fell off track. Okay, I'm going to get back on track. And like, what's the plan to realign yourself exactly. versus thinking it's a one and done thing. If you're always kind of in that mindset, I just want to, like you're thinking through your life in that way, you'll catch it a lot quicker. Yeah. I'll give you an example. I was on a phone, the phone phone call today with a a client of mine who works for, you know, very high level corporation. And she she was, she got on, I haven't talked to her in months and she was just, you know, a mess. Like, oh my gosh, like I, you know, I've gained five pounds and I'm just so uh, discombobulated and nothing's going well. The story was very dramatic. Yes. Right. Lots of drama. Courtney, I want you to believe every reason why I was not doing what I wanted to do. She was proving to me how, right, that this is all factual. Yep. And when she was done, 
I just said, so what? You got a little misaligned. Why are you making this such a big deal? Why are you making it mean that it's, it's such a bad thing? right? Like you learned a lot. You know what to do to get yourself realigned. So let's just commit to that. And let's create a strategy to do just that. And by the time we got off the phone, it's like, oh, like there's this breath of fresh air because there's this weight that's been lifted off of her that, oh, I don't have to make it mean. Like I can get rid of my Oscar nominated script (laughs) for how dramatic this is and just make it something, you know, just what it is. I got it fine. So what? But, but that, that um, story, she believes 100%, rightfully oh, yeah. so. My clients, I'm, look, I have my own coaches too. Like I have my own stories. And I chuckle because I'm like, oh, I'm telling my own story. Just tell me to stop. Okay, <laughs> what, what is it that I need to do here, right? Yeah. Like even the best of the best, we need people to go to, right? So we believe these stories because they're true until someone looks at you and they're like, hmm, is that true? Like yeah. sometimes that's all we have to say to our clients is, is that true? Just for our clients to take that breath back and is like, hmm, okay, yeah. well, and here's the thing. If you let her believe that story and that's what she wanted probably, how heavy is that to start fresh? You, you right. can't start fresh with that heavy story on you of what all of that means again, it's not path of least resistance. It's not, that's not an easy way to start again. Yeah. It's, it, and I think you and I can both relate to this, that when our clients come to us, you know, they're looking for what's really in the way, like, look at all these obstacles, help me overcome them. And it's like, okay, but I need you to first understand that you're the obstacle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You are the thing that is consistently getting in the way of all of these things because of the story you're telling yourself, because of the way you're defining yourself and your failures. So let's rework all of that and you're, you're going to breeze through those obstacles. Right. Yes. Oh my gosh. I feel like we could talk forever. Okay. All right. So Courtney, thank you so much for being here and sharing with my audience about self-leadership and what that looks like. Um, And I know you have a special invitation for our listeners. And I I will have said this in the intro that I pre-recorded. We did talk, you know, Courtney does exclusively work with women, but obviously everything we talked about today is valuable for both of you, male and female that are listening. But if you are a female and you want to take this deeper, um, Um, Courtney has a great invitation for something coming up that I want her to share with you. Yeah, I'm teaching a free online masterclass called Women's Health Reimagined. And we're offering it on three different dates. So it'll be September 22nd, the 24th, and the 26th. It's an hour long. And it's really for women who are just so done with dieting. Like they've, they've played that game a lot and they just never win. Because it's not meant for you to win. It's not structured in a way for you to win. And so I I introduce in this class a completely different pathway from what you have been sold by the diet and fitness industry for really taking radical ownership of your health journey. And, um, you know, I I have taught this, this workshop in the past and received so much great feedback So it is, uh, you can register for it really easily by going to graceandgrit.com forward slash reimagine. Great. And we'll have that link in the show notes as well. Perfect. Yeah, for sure. Courtney, thank you so much. And for those of you that are thinking, I'm not sure if you are thinking for an inkling, you need to show up to this. It's free, right? I yeah, think you said that. Yeah. So it's it's a free class. And I think that you'll get a bit more sampling of what Courtney can bring to the table, which I know is so much. Um, you heard when we started how important I see leveraging yourself, you, the business owner, you, the, the entrepreneur that, that needs to show up your best every single day. And if you need help putting tools in your toolbox in the health arena, along with the mindset piece, I can tell you that this is the next right step. And I say that all honestly, not just because we're friends, but because Courtney and I literally speak the same language from what we believe is truth to get our clients results. And if you like my style and my personality and you've been around for a while, I think you're going to really jive with Courtney too, because she's got a really straight talking style too. 
For um, sure. And, and they can get a sample at the podcast too, right? The Grace oh, and Grit podcast. Yes, obviously. I'm sitting here looking at your logo. I'm like, okay, I thought they could see you. Yes. So Courtney is a podcaster. In fact, um, just a little behind the scenes, like Courtney and I met at a podcasting conference three years ago, 2017, I think. Oh, I think it was four years now. Okay. Maybe four years ago. Yeah. 20, yep. It probably was 2016. And I went to this women's networking group in the bar, like the little lounge area. And we all had to introduce ourselves. And like, I saw her from across the room and I literally picked her up at the bar and I like beehived <laughs> over to like introduce myself to Courtney. And we started chit chatting and we connected and we started just like, we had so many parallels with how long we've been in business, the way that we speak and serve our clients, but in two different arenas, we both have boys and it was all from a random conference networking event. So that's why Courtney's here today. It's just this long-term. Ah, I mean, it was almost like it was meant to be when we met. So yeah, agreed. Totally. Agreed. All right, Courtney, thank you so much for being here. Um, again, we're going to link to everything. Thank you for serving my audience and sharing with us about self-leadership. Today. Oh, my absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for tuning in this week to Productivity Straight Talk. I have loved having you listen. No change, no change. Without taking action, nothing will change for you or your business. So based on listening in on my conversation with Courtney, what were some ahas that you can turn into action? I would love for you to pause for just a moment right here, right now, before you stop running or jump out of the car or do the next thing on your to-do list, pause and really ask yourself, what is one small thing that you can commit to taking action on that will have a rippling positive impact on your health and thus your business and life? All right. I hope you gave yourself the time, the moment to really find that for you. Because what I find is sometimes we just like consuming content. And maybe you listen to today's episode and you're shaking your head and you're laughing along with us and you're like, yes, yes, that sounds right for me. But then there's no action. So if you want to take this deeper and you want to find out more, I highly recommend that you take Courtney up on her offer for her free training. We'll be sure to link to it in the show notes. So wherever you're listening to this episode, go and scroll to your show notes, click on the link and register for her upcoming training. And while you're in the show notes, be sure to click on the Time Management Made Simple program. If you have not heard about it or don't know what it is, head on over to learn more and get instant access. This is my four-module on-demand Time Management Made Simple program where I literally share with you step-by-step, strategy-by-strategy, everything that I have been teaching my one-on-one clients around time management four years. And I want to make sure that you have access to it. So head on over to theproductivityspecialist.com forward slash time or click in the show notes and take a look. All right. So that's my straight talk for today. Until next time, have a productive week. 